Hello everybody. So we are getting ready to dive into Luke chapter 4. I'm going to be reading from 1 to 15. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read through them and we are going to talk about it. We're about to break this down because there's so much in this passage or in the scripture that we're about to read that deals with our everyday life that deals with what we go through now everything i'm about to read is relevant i mean if we're being honest everything that's in the holy bible is relevant mm -hmm. okay it's sharper than a two-edged sword okay cutting in between joints and marrow cutting in between the spirit and the soul so this is going to do a work in us and it's going to open our eyes to see so you guys know the drill grab your bibles i'm going to be reading from my king james version and um you know feel free to get you know paper and pen if you want to take down notes this is definitely something you guys should go back and read um yourself just so that you know the word can be in you it's gonna go through your ears today it's gonna drop through but it, it's a good thing to go back and to meditate on it because that's how we become renewed transformed and renewed so let's get into this prayer and then we will get into the word that the lord has for us today so let's pray dear heavenly father Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for constantly pouring into us, constantly opening up our eyes, God, and constantly directing us in the path we should go to. God, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your kindness. I thank you for the renewal of grace, God, and to be able to continue to press forward with whatever it is that we're going through. God, today I just pray and ask that you open the eyes of your people, open the ears of your people, open the hearts of your people god i pray that this is applied to their lives what we're about to read through what your holy spirit is about to talk about god i pray that you know whatever area that this is happening to them that you know you show them that you bring it up and reveal to them where this is literally going on in their lives god i pray that you help us to see the enemy for who he is god and to see the agenda and to stick close to you god and let you lead as we follow and not the other way around god i thank you for what you're doing i thank you i thank you god thank you thank you thank you speak through me you know kill all of my flesh crucify it okay get rid of it and let your holy spirit flow in Jesus' name we pray amen everybody all right so we're going to be reading from like i said luke chapter 4 starting at verse 1 and it says and jesus being full of the holy ghost returns from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended and when they were ended he afterwards hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread and Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem. And set him on a high, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hinge. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hand 
they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. Mm, 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 mm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. All right, guys. So let's break this down now. Let's get in, get into it. All right, let me reposition myself. Okay, so listen. It starts off with saying, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Okay, being full of the Holy Ghost, because this ends up happening after he gets baptized by John the Baptist, and then it says, and you know, the Holy Spirit mm, comes as like falls on him like a dove, and um, then the voice of God is heard, and it says, um, "Behold, this is uh, my beloved Son." So you know, he's presenting, and then he says, "Whom I'm pleased." <laughs> Talk about the honor. Talk about the intro. <laughs> this is beautiful. Okay, anyway. So, you know, and then he, so Jesus gets the Holy Spirit. And, um, and right afterwards, it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, because he's baptized, uh, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And in those days he did eat nothing. Okay. And when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. So, you know, he was tempted for 40 days. And it says, and afterwards he hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, so if you be the son of God, if you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now you hear, you hear how the devil is talking though? Pay attention. If you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So already, so Jesus, first of all, gets baptized by the Holy, I mean, with the Holy Spirit, okay, so he receives it, God already said, you know, this is his son, he already made the announcement, with whom he is pleased, so God, Jesus knows, okay, who he is, God told him who he is, right, and then the devil's over here questioning him, right, questioning his identity, like, if you are, if you are and to point out that's something that the devil likes to do with us right when we are in the secret place with god and we're conversating with god or we're listening to god and we're reading and we're praying or we're fasting or we're worshiping you know god he gives us messages and he tells us things and he speaks to us and god can tell us like you know what I have this promise for you. This is what we're going to do. And then the moment you're out of, you know, fasting, the moment that you're out of worshiping and praying, the moment that you're just getting back into life, the devil comes and tries to snatch that. Like, did God really tell you this? Did he? And if so, prove it, right? But Jesus, of course, he says, and Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, meaning man shall not live by food only, but by every word of God. Meaning the Bible is important to our daily living just as much as we feel we need to eat food and just as much as we're told we need to have three meals a day. And some people even say, you know, when snacks in between and whatever like we need god's word just as much if not even more because you know we can fast and not eat anything for for days but it, you know if we're reading and taking in god's word we we're full we have the strength we are 
making it through. We're not sitting here literally dying, even though it might feel like we're dying depending on how long we're doing the fast. But reading the word is where we get our strength through the Holy Spirit is where we get our strength because we're dying to the flesh, which is, you know, eating the food, dying to the flesh, and um, living through his word. And then it says, And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomever I will, I give it. So now he's saying to Jesus, right? I will give you all of these things, everything I'm showing you, all the riches, the fame, the the kingdoms, all this thing that, you know, is normally even um, tempting for humans, for for us. You know, the devil's offering him the, the world, right? He's offering him all this stuff. If, though... If you worship me, and this is what he says, if you therefore will worship me, all shall be yours. So if you, instead of worshiping God, instead of fulfilling the purpose God has for your life, instead of believing in the destiny God has for you, if you worship me, I'll give it to you right now. I'll give you everything you want right now. I will give you the desires of the flesh right now. All of this will be yours. He's giving Jesus this, you know, what the Lord is going to give you, right? Because it's already his. What the Lord is going to give you instead of you waiting for it. I give it to you right now now and you guys that's really how the devil works he works in between the inconvenient for us so you know god is a god of taking his time because he's more into making sure we're fully equipped and ready and prepared god is a god of getting the heart right getting the mind right getting your spirit right getting your strength uh, letting you know who you are. God is a preparer. God is a detailed God. God is strategic. God is not a God that just gives you what you want like the devil, right? Because the devil will give it to you easy, early, whenever, however you want it, he'll give it to you. That's not the problem. But the thing is, you won't be ready. You'll be willing to to lose everything to get it you'll become desperate because you cannot maintain it you are not prepared he'll give you all the money but you'll only spend it you'll be in debt it'll ruin your life because the devil will give you whatever because he wants to steal kill and destroy he don't give a crap about us as a matter of fact he hates us to the core <laughs> he hates us so he'll give you it he has no problem why because he wants you crawling coming back he wants you in desperation he wants you anxious he wants you suicidal he wants you to be confused he wants you unstable he wants you to be double-minded he wants you to not know who you are he wants you to feel like you need him but why would we want to put our hope and our trust into somebody who hates us that don't make sense if if somebody offered you an opportunity right now it's your dream job but you knew they hated you and they would be your boss and you knew they hated you they didn't hide it they showed you yeah they smiled in your face but you knew they were plotting on you they were planning to destroy you ruin your name ruin your life like, you knew their intent was ill. Would you take it? Because that's what we're doing with the devil when we decide to, to switch in what God has for us. 
for the right now, for the inconvenient, because the devil is in what seems inconvenient. He's like, I'll give it to you now. If you really want it, I'll give it to you right now. But you're going to have to sacrifice what the Lord has for you. But I'll give it to you. And, and guess what? You're going to pay for it. You are going to pay for it. You are going to pay for it. Nobody wants to sign a contract when it's a bad deal. If you could really read everything in the contract, you wouldn't sign it. If you knew. And, and I'm going to use... An artist because that's you know I do music um, so for instance I would not sign to a record label if I knew signing to them and I, and I mean like the top one you know um, we could say Rockefeller we could say bad boy records or we could say jive or we could say Interscope or Atlantic or we could say a bunch okay uh, Warner Brothers or even though I feel like they're through Def Jam or <laughs> And I don't think it's record label, but you get the point. Universal, okay? So I would not sign a record label if in there I'm reading. And let's say, y'all, my catalog is huge. Let's say I'm already out here popping, you know, where I'm already performing and I'm already making uh, things happen for me. You know, I might not be at the global, um, you know, stage of my life. But I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm making money, decent money. Um, it's working. You know, I know that if I keep sticking to it, um, it's going to pop. I'm going to get it, right? And let's say I get this, this contract. And then they're starting to tell me, if I sign with them now, I'm going to have a 360 deal. And then on top of that, I'm signing all my... Um, my rights away right i'm giving them my masters and they're owning a hundred percent um they gave me an advance they're gonna or they're gonna give me an advance of like a um, hundred mil okay and um you know but there's these guidelines and then in them giving me the advance i have to pay that back in a year Okay, they're going to book all of my shows. They are going to pick out the studios I go to. And those studios are going to cost me like $2,000 an hour. Um, and they're going to pick my choreographer. And they're like $50,000 um, um, per visit. Uh, vocal lessons, and that's like twenty thousand dollars to see this person so they're spending my money anyways because all these things i need then i gotta pay my team right if i am writing uh not even writing my own songs i have a ghostwriter a person who comes and helps me to write the songs i gotta pay them like everything is coming out of my stuff that they are in charge of and picking so it ain't like i can go back to my friend who was charging me 50 dollars an hour if that's the case okay like i have to go to their people okay so i have to pay for the pr that's coming out of this um what did i say 100 mil you know and everything is just expensive i have no control um over nothing anymore like now i'm a product to them i have to do what they say when they say however they say you know let's say for instance i'm like a certain type of artist and um now they want to make me into somebody else you know like this is one janky deal you telling me i done wrote all my song got them all popping they're going viral or you know i'm breaking out and things are moving consistently and i know if i just stay 10 toes down i'm a pop because it's working it's working it's just do i want it now do i want to pop right now and um i don't have so much of a leverage you know it's like i just want to be famous right now you know the devil will make it sound like it's good but think of all the things that i'm giving away i'm not giving you all my masters and I pay for everything. I'm not giving you ownerships of my song or letting you sell the songs that I've written or shop to other artists. If indeed I wrote that song for me, 
<laughs> you know, and then let's say with them getting all my songs now the songs that i've written they can go ahead and give them to their artists right and i'm not making the money they're gonna make the money because they own it so that's what i'm saying it's janky the devil is in the detail and in the waiting the devil is the type of person where he wants your destiny at any cost he don't want you to do what god has designed you to do because listen you guys it's black and white. There's no in-between. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. There's no mixture. There, There isn't. You can't straddle. God don't like, you know, lukewarm. Pick a side. Pick a side. And the devil is after your destiny. The devil is after your voice. The devil is after your testimony. The devil is after your purpose, you know, and the people connected. Like, what we have to realize is, like, when it comes to us being obedient, to the things of God, to what God tells us to do. We are not just, you know, saying, no, God, not today, for ourselves and for our future. Like, it's a generation that is attached to us. It's people waiting on us, attached to our calling. The Bible, you know, God says we're here to set the captives free. You know, heal the brokenhearted, open the eyes of the blind. We are here for deliverance. Like, we have a mission, you guys. And the devil is after it because he is just a sorry, sorry, sorry individual. Why? Because he got kicked out of heaven. He is not on the team of the Father who is above all. Okay? God sits in heaven on a throne that is rightfully his while his foot is on earth in the the earth is his footstool okay he's above okay all principalities dark powers wickedness whatever is attached to the devil he is above above all above all and the devil is just here because he's trying to advance his kingdom and he knows he's here on a short short time so for him it's me or you for him it's i gotta do what i gotta do by any means necessary i will do whatever because i have nothing to lose because he's going to hell <laughs> that's what he's doing he's not getting an opportunity to uh, mend things with god you know and the devil is so deceitful that you know, he wanted to be God so bad. And then, well, he got casted down. One third of the angels in heaven got left too. And so what is this saying, y'all? If we know that eternity is either in heaven, where there's peace and happiness and many mansions that Jesus is preparing for us, Okay, I mean talk about paradise every single day and you don't have to worry about nobody getting sick or um, anybody canceling the trip or like you ain't got nothing like this is all inclusive y'all and you ain't pay for nothing. You know, except for, you know, the sacrifices um, that you've made to choose Jesus, to choose God, to, you know, choose the Holy Spirit, but... This is a wonderful, peaceful place. This is fabulous, you know? And um, then there's eternity in hell, right? Where you burn for eternity. There's what um, souls, people burning for eternity. Uh, there's fear for eternity. There is... Um, gnashing of the teeth wailing crying i mean dark places like think you're in there with everything demonic and they can probably do whatever they want with you like it's not because the thing is earth is a mixture of the two you get a little bit of heaven with a little bit of hell this is what we get now with heaven you get everything good with hell you get everything bad meaning there's peace in heaven so there's torment in hell 
there's anxiety in hell there's no help like you're not going to hell and you're able to pray to god and be like god save me like hell is the absence of god like think about you know um a moment where you let's say you're in the room by yourself and and let's just say like for me or whatever like i'm here and i'm talking to you and then all of a sudden uh, i didn't hear somebody come down the steps and then they come in and they scare me i'm like whoa you know because i wasn't prepared for that okay and like fear jumped on me for a second i was scared for a second for a second it's not the same in hell. You will be fearful for the rest of your life. If you even read um, in the Bible and where, you know, Jesus had went down to hell during, um, after he was crucified, right? He, he went to hell and he went to release people who were down there in hell. He released some people and freed the people and took the keys from the devil. He came on earth he trampled over you know principalities all these dark rulers for us to give us freedom to give us hope to give us a, an opportunity to be with him and in the bible there's this point a uh, part where lazarus dies and so does a rich man and the rich man goes to hell and he's asking like just for some water give me a little bit of water he's asking like abraham like just a little bit and then it says he that abraham can't because there's a chasm in between like so imagine it's so hot and there's nothing nothing you can do but burn so those are the things it's it, when you choose to do things the devil's way it's like yeah you get heaven um I wouldn't even say heaven on earth. Like, you get to have your desires, your fleshly desires on earth. But it comes with a price, especially if you are getting them from the enemy. And you got to think, too, like, the devil is sitting here tempting Jesus. When Jesus is on a mission, he's set on an assignment to free us. To free us. And then think about this, because I did mention and I said that people's lives are connected to us, right? Generations. The same for Jesus. So let's say if Jesus, right, was like, mm, say, Annie, I could have it right now. Um, I could live my best life right now. And you mean everybody will worship me? I mean, all these things will be mine? I mean, I get the glory for these things, right? Because what is he trying to do? He's trying to manipulate Jesus. Like, he manipulated the angels up in heaven who decided to follow him. And because their leader is the devil, the father of all lies, guess what? All of them are going to hell. So anyways, think about this, though. If Jesus decided not to um, stick with God and the plans that God had made and told him to do, all of us... All of us wouldn't be reaping the benefits of what we get with Jesus on dying on the cross. All of us would be suffering till this day. Suffering. I mean, the devil would have more access to us. Destroying us. I mean, think about it. Like, really think about it. He, he would have changed our lives and our future and our generation. We all be going to hell. All of us. So just think about that. If he would have just decided not to be obedient. If he would have decided just not to listen to God. If he would have decided, God, I don't want to wait. Because, you know, his mission was three years. So he's like, I don't want to wait. I want it right here. I want it right now. I want to go live in sin. I want to be living the, the life now, the glory right now. He's promising me this right now. And he's showing me at that. He is showing me. I mean, this sounds like a good deal. You know, like, think, just think about that. And so, 
He, the devil shows him on a high mountain all the kingdoms in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and whomever i will i give it if you will worship me that's it just worship me call on my name pray to me conversate with me believe that all this power is me Thank me, need me, care for me, right? Anyway, tell the people it was me, right? Because that's why he got kicked out of heaven, right? He wanted to be like God, right? And then Jesus says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord. You shall worship the Lord, your God your god why i'm gonna worship you satan but i can worship even your god why am i going to an employee but he's not an employee he don't work for god right but anyways you know well i guess occasionally like if we talk about job how jo how god stopped him and said have you considered my servant job so i guess we could say he's an employee of him to an extent right so anyways he says your god so you know why we want to talk to the employee y'all why we want to talk to saying who is a bad apple who we can't trust no way who don't care about us who wants to sabotage our lives and wants us to burn in eternity with him and suffer i mean come on that's that's crazy because there's real humans like that that have that spirit hanging around them boy who know they're going to hell and want to drag you down this horrible path with them right anyway so he's saying your god okay worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve i don't know about y'all but i'm not gonna worship satan i will not i'm worshiping the lord okay i'm worshiping god the god of who abraham isaac jacob forever and always forever and always because god kicked satan out of heaven it ain't the other way around i know who holds the power and the authority i know who's in charge here and he loves me so i can trust him and he's holy everything in him is pure and he is a shield to those who trust in him mm. Mm -mm. i'm so jesus had me at birth okay when he decided to put me in my mama's womb he he came out with me y'all and he had me up in heaven because y'all know we's the spirit first before he put us in our mother's womb because how else would he have known us right because he says he known us before we were in our mom's womb so he knew me and he had me up in heaven before he put me in my mama's body to get me out into the world so i'm thankful for him okay talk about a shield and a guard talk about a lover and a protector and a provider let's talk about it i ain't stupid i ain't serving no other god but the one that i know and the one that i just told you about okay i love the trinity okay god jesus and the holy spirit and i'm thankful for the holy spirit who is my guide and my helper and i am thankful for the holy bible okay I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the relationship I have with God. I am thankful. Okay? And then listen to this. <clears throat> so then it says, And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast yourself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Hmm least at any time thou shalt or thou um okay dash thy foot against the stone so what he's talking about here is what god is talking about in psalm 91 because he god says you know that we have the angels encamped around us and the least you know will have it will dash our foot on um on a stone so what satan is talking about here that is a promise from god and as we notice even in the patterns of things of how satan likes to 
poke at us he's he's doing the same tricks and tactics that he was using when um he was getting Adam and Eve to fall over when he was talking to Eve, if you notice. He was like, God didn't say you couldn't eat from all the trees or something like that. Like, he's manipulative. He likes to throw in just a, a little bit and then keep tacking to get you to question what you're even saying. Okay? He wants to see, do you really know what you're talking about? Do you really believe the word that the preacher preached to you today? Do you really, did you really receive the word that came out the Bible? That when you read it, it hit your core and your spirit? Do you believe it? And how do you know if it's true? What proof do you have? Right? He's testing you because, you know, the Bible says like, you know, about the the parables about the seeds the three different types of seeds you know and one of them is the one where we get it and it sounds good right but then we let it go and then there's the good ground the good ground that receives the word takes the word holds on to the word and believes in the word and that is important because satan likes to test you right because in the beginning uh, it says he was tempted that's what it was tempted okay of the devil what does the devil do he likes to tempt us that's what he likes to do he gives us whatever it is that we think is cute or that we really really want like you know the devil isn't in our mind he don't know what we're thinking he knows what we speak which is why it's important to watch the words that come out of our mouth because, you know, God says that there's life and death in our tongue. You know, if we're speaking positive, if we're speaking the words from the Bible, you know, the angels can grab, God's angels can grab that and manifest them, you know, like into the prayers and believing, like we're shifting things in the spiritual realm when we are like calling on God's word, speaking it, believing it, manifesting in it, like not manifesting, in it but um meditating meditating on it and then when we speak negative things right then we're giving the devil legal access to hold on to these things and to manifest them into the physical right so it's important that we're cautious of what comes out of our mouth because when we speak life god is hand is on that and moving that when we speak death when we speak death the devil is working on that to bring that to pass because the devil can't do anything that's why jesus is saying here right get thee behind me satan he's telling him get behind me satan he is rebuking him okay and so we have to really really pay attention to what is going on around us and what we are spending our time in and what we're doing and what we're speaking okay because it's life and death okay satan gets legal access to our lives when we are constantly speaking negative things he's like mm, you know what i was thinking the same thing like when you're like ah i hate work i don't feel like going today or you're like man my friend ain't really been a friend i feel like they're gonna do some scap right or just things you're just thinking like oh, oh my god i hope my car don't break down you know and then it broke and it breaks down right and you're like oh i can't get a break and Satan's like good thank you because you just gave me access to go make a bigger mess right so just think about that and then anyway so it goes on to say like um so Satan is using the scriptures, right, against uh, God because Jesus, well, Jesus, but God is Jesus in the flesh. But anyways, because, you know, as he is saying to to him is he's taking the Bible because Jesus kept saying it is written, it is written, it is written. So Satan's like, okay, well, I got something else that's written. Mm, let's see how you reply to that because you ain't going to say it is written, right? Because I just told you something that was written, right? Right? So then, this is the devil just trying, you know, like that person who just won't stop. So then he says, let me read it. It says, and Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, 
You shall not tempt the Lord, your God. It is said, okay? You shall not tempt the Lord, your God. So what is Jesus doing? First of all, I'm not going to prove anything to you on who I am. I know who I am, okay? I know who I am. I was in the wilderness. I know who I am. And in the wilderness, you know, God, Jesus is over here praying, you know, spending time with God. You know, which is why a lot of um, pastors and, um, you know, powerful people who um, are doing God's will are fasters. They fast. Why? Because they're dying to the flesh and they are living in the spirit. And when you do that, when you're sacrificing time with God and seeking God, you do become more powerful because then your Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of God, when He, because we are the temple, so when the Holy Spirit is in us and we are dying to the flesh, we're starving the flesh, we are letting Him live in the most magnified way. We are letting Him live and take over. So we do become more powerful. Okay, so then it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, okay, well, all of them, because he, he kept trying, right? And it says, He departed from him for a season. Okay, so he left for, for a season. He left for a season. Not forever, y'all. So after you get done battling and telling the devil, the words of the Bible, right? Because the devil likes to be picking on people. That's what he does. He's after our souls. He wants to ruin our lives. He hates us. He hates God. And he don't want God's plan to prevail, but we already know God's plans are going to prevail. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, listen though. So, after Jesus wasn't, wasn't converting... You know, his mind is on the mission, what he is called to do, who God said he is, what God told him to do. He is focused and he is, like, taking his father's business serious. And we know that, right? Because when he was 12 and his parents came back for him, right, because they, they didn't know where he went, he says, don't you know I'm about my father's business? So we know Jesus is about his father's business. He's not getting sidetracked and even by the little distractions that are happening. Jesus knows who he is. He knows who he is. Okay? He knows who he is. He knows the power he has. He's not sitting here like, I need to flex. You, you, you don't think I'm the son of God? Oh, okay then. Come on, how many how many stones would you like me to turn into bread? Like, he's not even prideful. He's humble. He don't even care what, this, what the devil thinks. He don't care. He here for the mission, not to prove nothing to nobody. Like, and that just shows case the perfection of Jesus' heart, the purity of his heart. Like, he's so humble. So humble. Like, how many people do you know that would have been like... Uh, nah, listen, I'm gonna turn the stone into bread. I'm also gonna um turn the tree into a fountain of water, you know, like people. <laughs> but Jesus don't care, he about his father's business, he ain't got nothing to prove. He heard what God said when he said his son, who he is well, well pleased with, he heard him. And he believes in who God says he is. He believes in the mission that God has. He's sticking to it. Because he also knows that there's a generation. There's multiple people connected to his purpose. It's life and death. Right? So listen, Jesus is ending the fast. Jesus is stepping out of the wilderness. Going into the mission. And then the devil is trying to stop him with a decoy, right? Because, you know, when you take what the devil um, has, you get all his fruits, right? What's his fruit? Everything that's opposite of Jesus. So what is that? Torment, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. What else we got? Um, did I say depression? You know, sorrow. 
um, just the whole bunch. Of whatever is negative and evil, them going to be your friends. Them going to be the spirits hanging around you, okay? You trading in your peace for that. You, you, there's no more clarity. It's confusion all the time. So think about it. You are getting everything horrible. Everything you are like, I wish this never happened. I wish this never happened to them, to me, to my family, to whomever. Like, you, mm, you know, even some of the things where you look, oh, I wish somebody would, but really you don't wish that. Like, everything negative is of this man, <laughs> of the devil. So then it says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So listen, after Jesus said, I'm sticking with my father in my father's business and the devil flees listen to this right after because the devil tried to get in real fast right and right after he leaves because it's the same day same time like this is probably like a five minute conversation right like and it says and jesus returned in the power of the holy well not of the holy and jesus returned in the power of the spirit but we know that's the holy spirit uh, into Galilee so now he's in the power of the Holy Spirit and there went out a fame wasn't the devil just trying to offer him that mm. wasn't the devil just trying to act like Jesus could only get it from him mm. and there went out a fame of him through all region round about powerful the devil just tried to take him to the highest mountain right to show him all of the kingdoms right ain't that what it said right in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power all this power does this not just does this not say all does this not say where it says the kingdoms he shows them all the kingdoms what happens he gets region he gets region then it says right all this power will i give you and the glory of them and then what does he get the power of the holy spirit and then the glory of that because it says and he taught in their synagogue being glorified of all listen to that everything the devil was trying to give him god already promised he god already planned to give it to him the devil just wants to give a watered down version of it jesus wouldn't have been healing nobody he would have been corrupting the people but are you understanding though, you guys? Like, are you really understanding how important it is for you guys to complete the mission God has called you to? Because it's very important. It's not just about you. It's for generations that'll be birthed through the people you are pouring into. That'll meet other people who they will pour into. It's deeper than that. And then listen to this. I'm going to go ahead a little extra and then go to, so I'm still in chapter 4, but I'm going to drop down to 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has, deliver, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. To the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty, to set at liberty them that are bruised. These are all the things Jesus is anointed to do. He would have never even tapped into that or known that or be greater than what Satan had to offer him. And Satan is over here bargaining with us every single day every single day trying to talk us out of what we should do and it comes in the form of mm, i should read my bible i should really read my bible 
but then you're like mm, i'm gonna read it later i'm gonna go and uh eat right or come in the form of i really need to pray i'm gonna make more time to pray and then you get busy and then you decide to make a phone call right now you're gossiping so <laughs> satan 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 boy you guys need to realize he's an ancient demon he ain't stupid he ain't stupid he give you anything you want any color you like anything you can dream of but it'll cost you everything you have everything you have but let's say right some of y'all already went down the wrong path right you're feeling stuck right what if i told you what if i told you god is forgiving god is patient god is loving he is kind he is merciful there is nothing you can do to make him not forgive you or love you or see you or care for you like god loves us like like i've mentioned before if that wasn't the case then jesus would have just died for some of us he died for all of us and if you guys are even like oh but i already sold my soul <laughs> what if i told you what if i told you that in romans jesus is, god says all souls belong to him what if I told you that Jesus even says in the New Testament as well that all of our souls were bought at a price. He already paid for them. So we can't give away something we don't pay for. That's like me going into the store and telling you, hey, you can buy this from me. But it don't even belong to me. I... That don't even and I come on. It don't make no sense. You can't buy nothing from me that don't belong to me. I can't sell you a house that don't belong to me. If I'm not working as a realtor, I can't just go up and be like, that house is beautiful. You want it? Buy it from me. And I don't got no connections. I don't know this how this person who owns this house. I, it's just pretty. We just both think it's pretty. And I want you to pay me. Now, I can't guarantee you get the house. You know, because I don't know if they're willing to sell it. I don't even plan to um to talk to them about it. Just pay me. Like, it don't make no sense. You know, there's, like, God is above all. Like, he is sovereign and holy. Like, <laughs> He is the best, the best one to partner with, to give your life to, to surrender, to chase after, to get to know, to be loved by, to be cared for, to be fought for by. Like, we are under Jesus, God's feet. Like, we are under. Like, he speaks a word and it manifests into flesh like that like that and it stays as what it is it's not gonna shimmer into something different because you know it's like the devil comes in a as an angel of light for a moment he's not gonna stay light the whole time give it time right wait like the lord says you're gonna see demonicness all over that demonic so what i'm saying y'all Talk to God. Build a relationship with God. Because if we see the devil tempted Jesus, and we know Jesus' purpose is huge, humongous. I mean, so huge that even before he was crucified, he prayed three times telling God, take this cup from me. But your will. I'm not saying your calling's going to be easy. I'm not saying that um, you're not going to run into issues and the devil is just going to leave you alone. No, because as we know, right, it says 
And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. The next time he comes into Judah to crucify Jesus. But he didn't know the plan. He didn't know the great plan of God. He didn't know this was a setup. He didn't. Why? Because in Romans 8, 28, right? It says, and we know all things come together for those who are called to the purpose of God and all of those who love God, you know? And to all of those who love God. God gonna work it out. But it'll, it, it'll change your life and it'll change God's life. I mean, not God's life. It'll change the people's lives. God's perfect. He don't need to change. We need to change. And we need to get in line. But what I am telling you, though, if you decide to do things your way and in the flesh, that's the same spirit of the devil. It is because he wanted to be God. He didn't want to, you know, work under God. Even though he got kicked out and he's still under God. But he wanted to be God. So now he's on this earth. Where he wants people to worship him and to pray to him and he will give them all these things but it'll cost you everything and not in a good way you will suffer all the days of your life and and not in a good way not in a good way not in a good way and i would tell you even deeper but i don't think we're ready for that conversation but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> Imagine being angry every single day. And some of you probably like, I am. Well, maybe you should give your life to Christ. Maybe you should apologize. Right? Second Chronicles 7.14 I made a video on that. Go, go, go listen to it. I think it was my uh, Hey Jude video. Go to it give you deeper deeper uh revelation and what i'm talking about but you see two ways and tell me if there anybody in the bible over here that they did the the deeds of the devil and they lived a miraculous life they sure did it nothing in here talks about the goodness of him because he ain't good He's a perpetrator. He is a backstabber. He is a killer. He is depression. He is suicidal thoughts. He is heavy. Heaviness. He is burden for burden for burden. The devil ain't sitting here saying, take my yoke. It is light. He is saying, no, suffer. Suffer, suffer. The more you suffer, the more, you know, the more I'm happy. The more you don't know about who you are and God works in my favor. Because guess what? The devil and whoever he, he got under him all gonna go to hell. And guess what? They all gonna be in trouble. They all gonna burn. God already tells us how it ends in the Bible. He already tells us, right? That, that the angel's gonna come wrap the devil up, lock him away, throw him away for a thousand years, right? Then when he comes back, the devil's going to go grab his people. I think it says as many as, um, like, sand. And then God is going to cast fire down, and they all going to die. So I think it's important to remember who is head here. Who's in charge here? Who's more powerful here? Like, if the Bible says God doesn't have a single wicked thought because he's holy and then he's sovereign, okay? <laughs> he can only have wonderful things in store for us. Only wonderful things. God is not a hater. God is not a man that he shall lie. God just wants us to say, yes, God, whatever you want to do, you can do it through me. No matter how big it seems or how small it seems, I want to be a part of what you're doing, God. Because I know you love me, you protect me. 
I know you'll do wonderful things for me. You say that even your glory will be upon me. So let's not get it twisted. God is our savior, okay? Through Jesus Christ, God cares about us. The devil don't care about us. He cares about himself. He's what selfish looks like in the flesh, right? He didn't want to be a worshiper for God. He wanted people to worship him, right? He was envious. They're not equal. What did the devil create? Nothing. Everything he lives in. Every every spirit he hangs around. Everything he in, is by God. Created by God. Not the other way around. Who created the world that we live in and that Satan lives in? God. God did. Because God is the creator of the universe. Of the moon. Of the sun. You know, he's power, power through the Holy Spirit, you know. The problem is, you know, is that people feel like it's, you know, they can only gain power with, you know, witchcraft and all these demonic things. But they don't understand there's power in Jesus, there's power in the Holy Spirit, and there's power, I mean... Have you not seen Benny Hen where he's praying and you see he worships first? You know, he gives God the glory first. And then what happens? He preaches and then when it's time for deliverance, have you not watched him where he just puts his hand out and people are falling? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is present. Because Benny Hen is, is making himself humble so God can exalt him right and exalt the holy spirit benny Hen is dying to the flesh in those moments to let the holy spirit do what he do because he's powerful so powerful more powerful than this new age stuff he's powerful and he's real the devil is an imitator it don't it won't last it won't last and we know that, right? Because in the Bible, where Saul wanted to bring back Samuel, right? And he went to the medium, or the witch, or whatever you want to call her. And then she brought Samuel, but she was scared. She was scared because Samuel was a real man of God. A real man of God. A real man of God. God was with him. She was scared. You guys, God, uh, God is the only one that should be feared. What will happen if we don't comply? You know, the fear isn't that God's going to push us or punish us. The fear is that the devil is going to have access and ruin our lives and ruin the ones around us it's the fear of what will happen to the people we love not that we should be scared of the devil because we shouldn't because god is greater but it's what are we withholding from ourselves and the people that we love by keeping god's truth in the book in our minds that go out the other ear we are not doing ourselves any justice by living in this world without God. We are not. With God, there's hope. With God, there's peace. With God, there's strength. With God, there's power. With God, there's so much. And he's doing so much in the world right now, which is why there's so much chaos happening because the devil is <laughs> losing his mind right now because he, he's working overtime for distractions and to mislead the people. But God is here to save his people and snatch his people and God loves us. He loves us so much. So that's all, you guys. I ended up going overtime. I wasn't planning to be on here this long, but... Let's pray, you guys. Let's end this prayer. End this with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your truth that you gave us today. 
We thank you for the time, God, for visiting us and giving us an encounter. We thank you that you have educated us, God, and that we didn't have to go to school to receive it. We just had to sit in your presence to receive it. Because you say there's things that no man knows that only he can receive through the Spirit. So God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for what you are doing in our lives, knowingly and unknowingly. God, if we are in your presence in sin, bring us to repentance. God, cleanse us. God, expose our hearts to us. And let the Holy Spirit do the work in us to transform us and to change us, God. To make us more of who you've called us to be, God. Let us trust you in all that you are and in the plans that you have for us, God. Um, I pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that we remember that you are hollow, that you are mighty, you are strong, you are unshakable and unmovable. You deserve all the glory, all the credit, all the praise, God, rightfully so. For you are righteous and holy. God, you are righteous and holy. God, we need you, for you are the breath in our lungs. We need you. Don't ever let us be too prideful or prideful at all to where we don't believe that, because we do. We are dust, we are dust, we are dirt. The same ground we were risen from is the same ground we'll go back to. We are only living because of your breath, because of the breath you breathe into our lives. God, I thank you, lead us not into temptation. God, lead us not into the evil days or the evil things, God, but lead us into your freedom and truth. For yours is the kingdom, the glory, and the power, and the Bible says, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. We love you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, God. Praise you, Trinity. We love you, we love you, we love you, and we appreciate you, and we want to be used by you. In your holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You guys have a beautiful and blessed day. Um, take your cares, you know, to the foot of the cross. Give them to God. Give your life to God. Give it. Repent for your sins. And ask God to come into your life to make him your Lord and your Savior. Ask him to renew you to purify you, to make you holy, to uproot all the lies of the devil and to place his truth. Ask God for the Holy Spirit and ask him for a desire to seek his face and to read his word and to build closeness with him. Ask him for his truth for he will reveal it to you. Okay, you guys have a wonderful night. You are loved by God more than you know. And if you are loved by God, you are dangerous. But you're even more dangerous when you know who you are in Christ. When you read the Holy Bible, when you read it and you agree with it and you say, Wow, God, this is such, such a beautiful love letter. This is such a beautiful love letter. When you read it and you agree with it, you become unstoppable. You become a chain breaker, okay? A curse, general curse breaker, okay? Casting down demons and all that, all of that, all of that, okay? So you guys have a beautiful and blessed day. Bye, you guys.